all of our presentations here at Royal Rose University, it's important that we begin with an acknowledgement of the traditional lands. Royal Rose University acknowledges that our campus is located on the traditional lands of the Kosepsum and Lekwungen ancestors and families. It's with great gratitude that we live, learn, work, and play or the past, present, and future scopes of Indigenous and non-Indigenous students, staff, and faculty come together. This is a great time to test out that chat box function. So again, looking at that black bar below, if you give the chat icon a click, the chat box should appear. Let us know where in the world are you joining from today? What sector are you working in? And if you're joining our webinar with any burning questions, feel free to pop them into the chat box as well. In a few slides, we'll pop into the chat box and get a feel for who's sharing the room with us today. To give you a quick idea of who we are, these faces that are appearing on your screen, my name is Selena Kunar and I'm an education specialist here on campus and I am so excited to be joined by Dr. Niels Agar-Gupta, Dr. Tammy Pazobon, and our current student Veronica Woodruff. We'll meet everyone in just a few more slides, but we are all here and are eager and excited to talk all things Master of Arts, Graduate Diploma, and Graduate Certificate in Leadership. So here I'm going to navigate into our chat box and see who we have joining us today. So we have folks joining us from Victoria, working in pa uh, passenger transport the passenger transportation sector. I myself am tuning in from Victoria as well and work within higher education. We have Rhonda. Rhonda is actually one of our wonderful enrollment advisors here on campus. And she you'll see her in our chat box, adding in helpful links uh, that'll direct you to our website, answering any questions that come up as well. Big thanks uh, to you for being here today, Rhonda. We have Michelle from Victoria, who works in health informatics. Kim from St. John's, Newfoundland, working in the federal public sector. Michael from Victoria, facilitator and writer. We have folks from coast to coast today, and I'm sure we have folks watching the recording later who are joining us globally as well. So big thank you to all of you. And feel free to keep popping your introductions in the chat box as it gives all of us an idea of who's in the room and how we can make sure the information is helpful to all of you. So next we're going to head into a quick uh, snapshot of the RRU experience, talk about the programs themselves, chat with Veronica about her experience here at Rail Roads and in the MA Leadership Program, cap off with some admission and application information, and then of course leave time for question and conversations as well. Though that said, if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat box as we go. So with that, we're just going to tell you a, a little bit about the power of our place here at Royal Roads University. So while you take a look at these, these beautiful photos, um, which actually are a pretty fair representation of what our campus looks like year round as we're located in Victoria, BC, which has pretty, um, one of the more milder climates here in Canada. So take a cruise through those photos. And while you do, let me tell you a little bit about Rural Roads. So here at Rural Roads, it's been important to us that through our 25 year history, we've maintained small class sizes and a conversational way of learning. We believe that when your professors are your peers, classes become think tanks and learning becomes a way of life on this campus. Learning not only is a way of life, but here at Rural Roads, your life is what informs your learning. So being a university for working professionals means that our students can and are expected to bring challenges and opportunities they're facing in their workplace into our classrooms. Because at Rural Roads, we don't exclusively do theory or hypothetical learning, but we're also getting elbows deep in real world problem solving in real time. We're so excited that we have uh, what's called the, the cohort learning model. So that means from the start of your program all the way to the end, you're moving through with the same group of learners 
who've come together through our standard or flexible admission models, which we'll talk about in a few slides, that allow us to curate these really diverse and interesting learning communities. At Roll Roads, you're not only learning alongside leaders, but from our leaders as well. We're so thrilled that all of the faculty here at Rail Roads are what we call scholar practitioners. So folks who are not only um, academic experts in their field, but who are still out in the world putting into practice what they teach in our classrooms, which allows all of our learning to be current and relevant to what you're experiencing in your workplace. That bottom photo, so the photo on the bottom right, you'll see that we have some folks beaming in similarly to how we are today. And we wanted to make sure to include that photo because Royal Roads pioneered this blended learning model. This model where we take the best of the on, this face-to-face on-campus learning experience and the flexibility of the online learning environment and we bring them together. We believe that our life-changing learning experience should be able to transcend the beautiful walls you see in these photos because everyone should have access to life-changing education no matter where they are in the world or where you are in your life as well. So we'll talk a little bit more about what this blended learning model means in a few slides. So with that, I'm gonna pass the microphone over to Niels to tell us a bit more about the program. Hi, Niels. Hi, Selena. Thank you so much for uh setting this all up. I'm really excited to be here. Um, <clears throat> you, you talked a bit about how this is about life-changing learning, and it really is. The students in our MA Leadership Program really do engage in uh, learning that is totally relevant for their purposes. They find community, they find uh, a real home in, in many ways, and uh, I just want to say, you know, my, my background is actually coming from looking at the world of diversity. Uh, I was a consultant with the Alberta Multiculturalism Commission and then did my doctoral degree in Santa Barbara you know, at uh, <clears throat> Fielding Graduate University. So <clears throat> I've been with the program since 2005, initially supervising theses and became a, a, a faculty teaching in residencies in 2007 when I started as a core faculty and I've been sort of on and off a program head was a program head also for the graduate certificate when that was a separate program. Um, and I, I want to just introduce uh, uh, Dr. Tam Pazubon, who is uh, joining us and has just to come on staff with us. She's a, not only, you know, she, has she been a, an executive elsewhere in the, in the Calgary Police, but she's a former student of ours. Tam, how, how are you doing? And welcome everyone. I'm so happy to be a part of this today. And uh, yes, it, it's been a full circle for me coming back to Royal Roads University. I, I came here into the program in 2008. Niels was actually one of my professors at the time. And um, you know, the tagline of Royal Road saying that it is life changing uh, is really relevant for me because I came into the program under the auspice that I was going to lead my organization. I wasn't happy with my leadership at the moment. I wasn't happy where the organization was going and I didn't feel that I had any control over that. And going back to school was something that had been on my bucket list. And when I started into the program, I soon realized that it really wasn't the organization. It was actually me and my leadership and how I was framing things, how I was moving about the organization itself and how I'd given up my agency as a leader within the organization. So the two years in the program completely shifted my perspective. Not only did I stay with the organization for an additional 15 years, I was promoted three times. And uh, I attribute a lot of that to the perspective change that occurred in this program. So I'm so happy to be here and to be back at Royal Roads now able to share my experiences with new learners coming in. Thank you so much, Tam. Um, <clears throat> I guess, the other piece is uh, a question you may be asking. It's like, so why study leadership? You could pick up a book on leadership anywhere. And I, I think part of the answer is that it, we really do live in, in uh, times of compelling challenges on all fronts, whether they're social, environmental, economic, political. Um, we really do need skillful, collaborative and engaged leadership on, on all fronts. Um, 
we are definitely seeing lots of ways in which leadership can be used for both good and ill. And, uh, you know, this is certainly, you just need to t turn on the TV and you can see lots of examples of this. But um, the, you know, we, we, see, we do seem to be uh, in, in some ways in this momentous time here. Uh, Adrienne Marie Brown has said in her book, uh, Holding Change, this one, um, that we are at a very particular moment in human history a time when we need to shift away from the competitive, directive, combative, colonial energy uh, to toxic leadership at every level of society. It's really time to move towards ways of being that are focused on listening to each other deeply and accepting each other whole. We need to learn ways of being in space together that help us see beyond false constructs of superiority and inferiority without taking us, without asking us, to sacrifice that which has shaped us. We need to study being receptive and non-judgmental with each other, letting the earth and community hold us until we remember we already belong, she says. This is an extraordinary time, and all of the changes brought about by the pandemic would have been unthinkable uh, two years ago. In our program, for example, we have residencies where people come to Victoria for a period of two weeks. We, we did not for a moment think we could do any of that online. We didn't think that level of, of connection and relationship could be built. And we have discovered that lo and behold, yes, it is different, but it's been an amazing experience to have done the residencies online. It, it's... Um, you know, it, it is really in this context that the skills and, and uh, competencies that we focus on in our leadership program are really critical for the issues we're seeing today. And, uh, you know, I would like to actually let you know that you can hear from Veronica herself as to what she's seen as being important and how that's played out for her. Uh, right as soon as we run through just the, the program uh, details here. So... What is it that you're going to learn out of this program? You know, I, I think at the end of this, you will have honed some leadership competencies to facilitate effective organizational and social change. You will have really experienced developing high performance collaborative teams and navigate complex uh, systems and develop more effective, resilient organizations uh, and, and communities. And uh, you'll have had uh, some really supportive experiences dealing with challenging personal and uh, professional issues relating to equity, diversity, inclusion, decolonization, reconciliation. Uh, all of those, those pieces are, are really important. Um, and, and uh, you know, I, I guess, uh, maybe it's time just to take a look at the next slide here and just sort of get a sense of how do these philosophical things play out in, in the school. We actually have a set of uh, four principles that, that uh, really uh, reflect how we think about leadership. The first one being leadership as engagement. We, we genuinely see the way that we engage others in a context, an organization or a community. That, that that's really about what leadership is, 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 in, is engaging others. Uh, you know, wisdom comes from, from the, the collective thinking of all the people on, on your team. And the, the other piece here, if I've truly learned something, it changes me. It makes, I have different ways of acting and behaving. Uh, that then carries through to scholarship. I can't just this isn't just about book learning. This has to connect back to how are people in a community or organization thinking about this. So it's, it definitely has to involve others and it has to involve some kind of positive change. And that requires, all of that genuinely requires an orientation to possibility. And, and in, in some ways I would, I would sort of, um, frame that along the lines of what uh, Marilee Adams in her book, Change Your Question, Change Your Life, would, would call a learner uh, model, which is, which is really about what can I learn from this moment, from this situation. And it's also what Paulo Freire would say uh, in his book, Pedagogy of Hope, 
you know, it is imperative that we maintain hope, even when the harshness of reality may suggest the opposite. Okay, so enough of the philosophical. Why don't we just take a look at the actual way the program works? And I, for that, I want to turn this over to Tam. Thank you, Neil. Um, for those that are looking at uh, the, the Masters of Arts in Leadership program, there are sort of three different options that are available to you. Now, the original Masters of Arts in Leadership, which is now referred to as the multi-sectoral, with the summer and winter intakes that you see there, is the original program that started in 1996 that is uh, geared towards emerging leaders from a variety of different sectors. And in the early 2000s, BC Health uh, created a health intake. Now this occurs in the fall. So although the core of the program is the same, uh, everything would have sort of a health perspective on it, including some of the articles and the literature that you would be reading to support that, would all be geared towards leadership in the health sector. And then finally, we're very excited about our new program that's starting up, our executive leadership, which has a spring intake, and that is geared towards mid-level and upper-level uh, leaders in organizations looking to make a deeper dive into sort of values-based organizations and creating values-based organizations. But maybe we're not quite ready to jump into a graduate program yet, right? Maybe we're thinking, if you were like me, when I went back to the program, I was intimidated, I was scared, and I wasn't ready. I wasn't really sure if I was up to graduate level of study. So there are other options available for you. Starting off with our graduate certificate, um, which, uh, or our graduate diploma. Or, of course, you could go right into the Master of Arts program. So there are different options that ladder into each other. Now, what is the graduate program like? What is the Masters of Arts like? It really comes down to three components. There is a pre-residency, a residency, and then a post-residency. So in the pre-residency, we're getting to know each other as, uh, um, cohort, as a cohort, getting to know each other as leaders, studying and sharing information online, doing weekly readings, doing weekly postings, leading up to what we call our two-week intensive. And pre-COVID, and hopefully very shortly here, it will be back on campus for two-week intensive study, where you will be emerging in study with your with your uh, other members of your cohort, and really um, having that intensive opportunity to delve deep into the literature and to actually apply your learning in a real real life setting. Following the intensive residency, you will go into post-residency, and that was we'll be going back with following up with more readings. You'll have some projects, both individual and team, and uh, you'll be doing both synchronous and asynchronous learnings with your, with your fellow learners. So what does that then look like? Let me sort of pack that all together. You know, thank you, Tam. Um, so here, here's sort of roughly what you go through in your two-year to your cycle in, in, in the program and sort of points where you could actually step out if you're in, in the this leadership certificate or the diploma. So uh, the academic integrity uh, course is the starting point of, of this, particularly for those who are coming back to university for a time or haven't, haven't you know, have, have been working professionals and are now coming back to, to get uh, academic upgrading. Uh, that leads into this blended one sort of uh, set of programs, which is typically the first residency term. Uh, that includes, uh, you know, we start really from an inside out model uh, for, for the, the learning here, which is really about uh, how do you see the world? What are your lenses on, on leadership? And that's part of the personal leadership and learning component. Uh, but that connects then to, okay, now that I'm connected, you know, can see, see some directions for me personally and, and how I'm seeing the world, how am I connecting with teams? And uh, frequently, uh, we give people a, a real chance to develop a high-performing team in the, the first residency. And, and uh, we, we uh, have a, an activity called the Leadership Challenge, where we bring in a nonprofit from Vancouver or Victoria area and... Uh, they, they then present a, a genuine organizational challenge that, that we have, which our teams of students then, then work on helping, helping them to address. It's a very exciting uh, first residency initiative. 
Uh, and that carries then forward into a systems understanding. How do how do how does leadership work through the different systems that people are part of, and what can how can they best work in that? That's the uh, program, uh, the course that sort of takes off at the end of the the residency. That leads into a a uh, the first distance uh, piece, which is all about. Um, uh, lead 516 or the concepts and, and theories of leadership and organizations, but because this also incorporates personal leadership, it's really about in, in including ways of thinking and ways of learning. So we, we've woven all kinds of uh, ways of uh, uh, behaving and thinking about leadership into that. That leads into an elective, and you've got a variety of choices here around electives. Um, if you're thinking about doing a thesis, then you need to take LEAD 519, the action-oriented research, so you have a better understanding of that and doing a literature review and all of the pieces that belong with a thesis. And that's then the end of the graduate diploma at the end of the that uh, elective term. That leads into the second residency a year later. And the, the focus there really is about leadership for organizational change, um, applied methods, and uh, the, the capstone design. And, and in, the, in the pandemic uh, of everything being online, uh, we've, we've had to rethink some of, some of our ways of thinking about this and have actually developed a first-person action research process to help people who, whose organizations have blocked them from doing an organizational study. Uh, and that's certainly true for health organizations and then some other first responding uh, groups. And that then leads, of course, to the either a project, the engaged leadership project, or a thesis. And if you take the, the engaged leadership project because it's a slightly shorter uh, capstone, there is a, a uh, reflective leadership course at the end of it. So that's, that's roughly how, how that works. But I wanted just to show you uh, a little bit, uh, next slide, please, uh, what kinds of uh, uh, projects that people are doing. And you can see here, we've got uh, uh, a whole range. These are, these are part of our uh, VIURR database, which you could uh, you, you, uh, see or, or uh, search online and find these on uh, um, indigenous methodologies, on looking at police surviving and thriving, on uh, looking at how to support an international student population at, at Saskatchewan Poet Technique, um, uh, looking at uh, leadership development and manufacturing, and then uh, looking at uh, things like uh, how, to, how to make uh, Victoria a better dementia-friendly community. So those are some of the the way, you know, these, these are just a small, small example of some of the kinds of projects that people are doing. Um, but let me introduce our guest. Uh, Veronica Woodruff is uh, currently in her second year working on a thesis. Veronica is a consultant in the um, um, uh, Pemberton area, in, uh, northeast of uh, Whistler, in case you, you uh, Want to locate where, where she's working. And uh, she is engaged in this most amazing uh, study of uh, looking at uh, resilience and uh, emergency preparedness. Welcome, Veronica. How are you doing? Good, Phil. I'm doing great. That's, that's wonderful. Uh, so so let, let me ask you this, this question. What drew you to the MA Leadership Program? Um, well, to be completely honest, I really just wanted some more letters to my name. I like Tam. I, uh, you know, I always felt I wanted to go back to school. And I looked at all of Royal Roads programs and um, I have a background in environmental science. And I looked at their um, environmental education programs and some of their other environmental programs. Also their climate programs, their disaster risk reduction programs. And I said, you know what, if I went into leadership, I could do everything. So I decided to go into the leadership program. Wow. Okay. So um, what's been the most meaningful thing uh, in your experience at RRU? 
Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny because walking into the program, like, okay, well, I'll just get some more letters. And then when you start that very first semester and you go through that um, leadership of self, I wasn't expecting how powerful that would be and how um, even personally uh, emotional it would be when that whole first six weeks is all about who you are as a leader. And it was so profound. It really, you know, that logo of life changing, it really is, it changed my life on how I viewed myself and then moving into teens and then to my impact that I could make within the broader world, just within that first semester was really um, surprising to how meaningful that was, that experience. Yeah, and, and, and uh, of course, you, you are a consultant in the Pemberton area, and you're actually working on a whole range of, of projects, all of which have been, I think, really helpful for you as well in terms of your leadership uh, university degree. Yeah, this, that's actually part of it because, you know, w working under this leadership umbrella, I didn't have to shy away from the things that I was really passionate about, whether it was, you know, um, okay, so I do a lot of work with nonprofits, mostly around environmental education and food security. And then I have this professional world in, you know, as a consultant, pr first as an environmental consultant working in hydropower. And then more recently, uh, in my own business, uh, doing grant writing for communities. It just, it, it was such a good mesh. And I learned so much, um, you know, uh, certainly through the whole process. But, you know, that first semester was so, um, it was so interesting. And then to go through um, what you're talking about there, Niels, when you're going into the thesis route and even those that didn't and did that 519, that's where that, uh, that uh, scholarship piece really sunk in. That was, that was the really, um, it was a ton of reading, a ton of writing, all those great things that I was expecting to do uh, in a program like this. So it's been, a, it's been great. So what's been the most challenging part of this program for you? Um, you know, I applied in March, 2020. And so my program started in June, 2020, and I was expecting to be able to go to Royal Roads for the residency. So two weeks of Zoom when you're on there for eight hours a day, <laughs> I, you know, it, that was challenging. And also I'm, we have, um, our cohort is people from across this country and through the US and I've never met any of them, but these are people that I text with all the time. Like, I feel like I was able to make really meaningful connections despite being online. And that was just something that we all sort of had to commit to, you know, at the, at the beginning of the program. Sorry, my dog wants to go outside in the background. This is life on Zoom. So he get used to those things too. Uh, so I think the Zoom part, it'd be nice uh, if we're able to go to Royal Roads to graduate, but we've done two residencies online. And uh, although challenging to be on Zoom for that many hours a day, it's still been meaningful. Yeah, it's true. And we've discovered all kinds of things because we are, we wind up going into people's homes and, uh, you know, so we've seen babies, we've seen parents, we've seen dogs and cats and all kinds of things. Uh, we've discovered puppets as a great way to entertain the small small people when they happen to be on camera too, which has been great. Um, what, what have you had any concerns about uh, going back to school? What what did? Oh what, what well, did I you? work full time, so how how <laughs> I'm full time? I have a twelve year old. I have a husband. I have. I like to ski, like where am I gonna fit this in, right? So that was that was a concern if I was gonna be able to have the time. So how did you do it? Yeah, that's, I, I, did, I, I feel fortunate because I was able to carve out a little bit of time, but I have worked full time the whole way through. And so um, it had, it, I had to schedule a time. So if I knew in some evenings, especially leading up to postings and everything, I really had to sit down and He's like, okay, I'm going to start working at 6 p.m. on this posting. I have to do it, which sounds terrible, but it just, you, I got into it and it was in a rhythm. It actually has made me more productive in my life in general. When those terms ended, I was like, oh, all this extra time in a day I didn't know I wanted to work in. So yeah, it's been great. So what, what would you recommend to anybody considering this program? What, what, what's your suggestion? 
Well, I think go for it. I think for me, I hesitated so long to jump into doing this. You know, it's like, oh, well, should I spend the money or should I do this? And then in reality, the school has supported me so much, both um, in the areas that I really wanted to focus on, like what I'm doing my thesis on, but also through funding. So I was able to get a shirt scholarship. I was able to get a MyTax grant for doing, um, you know, a research training award. So I was able to access these other things that I didn't actually know would be available to me at this program that um, just supported this journey. So I think, uh, yeah, go for it. It's been so good. And it's helped not only like my professional life, but my, I can talk to my husband better, <laughs> my, my, you know, my kids and things. So yeah, it's been great. Well, I, I couldn't to end this without asking you to talk just a bit about your capstone, your thesis research. What, what are you doing? Yeah, and this is the other thing about the program is like, it, it, they don't, you're not forced to work on a specific topic. And so I wasn't sure what I was going to do in the beginning, but um, the whole way through us, because my community is at risk from flooding, we have a severe risk of flooding. And, you know, in this time of like climate change induced risk, I thought, you know, this is something I could do. And my, I partnered with our um a government organization here that's in charge of dealing with our flood risk. And I've been working on how to basically break down barriers to a whole community approach to disaster risk reduction for flooding. So that's uh, a big topic and totally um, relevant to where we are today in the world. And uh, it's been so meaningful. So, so much of what you're doing is actually about some of the philosophical elements of leadership around engagement about people being able to let go of their power and control issues that they might have, you know, if there's, they're supposed to be in control of a particular area or how to, how to engage others. That's, that's, it's been really exciting to, to watch you proceed with this. And that's been wonderful. Can I turn this back? Thank you. Thank you so much for, for that. I want to throw this back to Selena at this point. Thank you so much, Veronica, Niels. That was, oh, just so exciting to hear about what you found uh, surprising, what you found difficult, what you found wonderful about the program. I am sure we'll hear from you again, Veronica, when we head to our Q&A. Um, we've already had some great questions. Uh, Shamel has popped one in. So everyone, feel free. If you have any questions about some of the uh, course content program information we've covered or more experiential questions for Veronica, pop them in the chat box. We're going to head into just a few slides around exploring the admission and application process. So bear with me while your screens change for just a moment and then we'll head right into that question and conversation. So how to apply? Well, as I mentioned earlier on in this webinar, we have both our standard and flexible admissions here at Royal Roads University. On this slide, you'll see our standard admissions requirements. So those look like a four-year undergraduate degree from a recognized post-secondary institution with a minimum GPA of AB+. We'll normally also look for a minimum of five years of leadership experience, though you'll see an asterisk there beside leadership. And that's because it's really important for us to emphasize that in this context, we're not speaking specifically to positional leaders. So we're not asking for five years of experience as a manager, a director, um, and an AVP. Instead, we're looking for folks who have minimum of five years of leadership experience in roles where you directly supervise staff or complete performance oriented oriented work, roles that may be volunteer in nature where you're providing your leadership experience, roles in which you're consulting, negotiating, or managing diverse interests, roles where you're leading others to a common goal or outcome, roles where you find yourself influencing, organizing, or co coordinating groups of people. You know, leadership experience is also exemplified within overcoming a challenging life experience for yourself or others, which involved navigating complex systems and resulted in a positive community change beyond yourself. 
So if you have any questions around that, you know, five years of leadership experience, connect with our offices. More often than not, this is where folks start to go, oh, you know, maybe not me, maybe I don't, maybe I don't. And you know, more often than not, you do. So don't self-select out. If you find yourself inquiring about a leadership program and getting this far and starting to think, you know, is it for me? Do I qualify as a leader? That's usually a good sign that you're a fit for the program. And that's why we've started encouraging emerging leaders to apply as well. So emerging leaders are folks who meet the degree requirement, but perhaps have fewer than five years of leadership experience, but have been in recent leadership roles or roles involved in people management for two or more years and have demonstrated exceptional leadership potential through their professional life experiences and are preparing for further leadership roles. So if you have any questions around what emerging leadership that guideline might mean for you, again, connect with our offices. You'll see here there's a chunk of text and a bit of smaller font here, and that's to share that applicants who meet the degree requirement, but perhaps not the GPA requirement, or who have been away from academic writing for more than 10 years, will normally be required to take academic writing and critical thinking here in our campus and obtain a B plus in that course. And also, completing that course before starting their program. This course is well loved on our campus with almost, almost every, let's say many programs on our campus requiring some of their learners or encouraging learners to take this course to make sure that before you start the program, you're well equipped with those practical skills around academic writing. You've got answers to things like, you know, what citation, how do I do that? So that when you start the program, you are well positioned to just dive right into the learning. And again, any questions about that course, you can always come chat with us. So flexible admissions. Flexible admissions is for those folks who may not have a traditional academic background, but have been working within the field for a significant number of years. As you might have noticed early in the webinar, here at Rural Roads, we put great emphasis on that real world learning. And that's something we want to emphasize within our admissions criteria as well. And that really allows us to have a wonderful mix of learners in our cohorts with varying backgrounds in terms of their academic experience, professional experience, and personal experiences as well. So for flexible admissions, we look for uh, learners with at least 10 years of professional experience, with five of those being um, years of experience, in leadership. And then all of our flexible admission applicants will be required to take academic writing and critical thinking. Again, for those same reasons to make sure that once you are hit the ground running within the MA leadership program, you have all those fundamental skills you need to fully participate in the course content. I'll note that flexible admissions is something we look at on a case-by-case -case basis. So if you have any questions about what criteria you, you do meet, what criteria you're, you need a little bit more guidance around if you meet, connect with our offices as we're always happy to help navigate those conversations. So how exactly would you go about applying? Well, as with most things these days, you start with an online application. That online application currently includes a fee of $128.81. And once that application is in, we look towards supporting documents to learn a little bit more about you. So things like official transcripts, a writing sample, personal statement, structured resume, and two letters of reference. Our website is a wonderful resource around learning, you know, what are these supporting documents? How long do they have to be? What information are you looking for within these documents? We have some um, guiding questions to support your personal statement. We have some helpful tips and tricks around how to structure that resume and some guidance around what sort of writing sample we're looking for. And then more practical things such as how do your referees get their letters to our offices? Upcoming intake. So this is a very exciting slide because for our MA leader, M Master of Arts in Leadership, the Graduate Diploma in Leadership, 
graduate certificate in leadership, the multi-sectoral offerings, so the ones that we've been chatting about here today, they kick off June 6, 2022, putting the application deadline at March 6, 2022, so just around the corner. If you're looking a little bit forward, we also have our December 12, 2022 start date posted, which means that your application deadline would be for September 12th, 2022. And if some of our specializations might have sparked your interest, our executive leadership specialization starts April 18th, 2022, and our health specialization would begin September 19th of 2022. It's really important here for me to note that at Rural Roads, we accept applications on an ongoing basis. So that means we're not actually gonna wait until March 6th to decide, okay, who's gonna start with us June 6th? Instead, as your online application is in and your supporting documents are submitted, we're able to adjudicate your file and let you know about the seat in the program. This means that some of our intakes can fill up quite quickly. So if there is a specific date listed here that's of particular interest to you, we highly recommend getting that online application in as soon as you can, as that signals to us that you're interested in the program and lets us know which intake and start date you're interested in as well. Financial aid. Financial aid is incredibly important when you're looking towards your post-secondary planning. So I'm just gonna flash this up really quickly as it'll be included in our recording. But here we have the website and direct phone lines for a financial aid and award specialist who can help you out answering questions around loans, awards, scholarships, and other types of funding as well. And where you can find us. So every time I've said, hey, connect with our offices, here are the direct phone lines and email of our offices. <laughs> so Rhonda, who has been with us today, is just one beautiful example of the enrollment team we have here on our campus, eager to answer any questions you might have about these programs or any others on our campus as well. So you can find Rhonda and her team at learn.more at rollrose.ca. So that email is for our for anyone who's joining us today that's a Canadian citizen, a permanent resident, or refugee, you can connect with us at learn.more at rollroads.ca. And for those joining us who are international citizens or temporary residents, our international enrollment advising team would be more than happy to help you at learn.more.international at rollroads.ca. And if you're interested in connecting with the School of Leadership directly to ask any questions to connect with Niels or Cam, you can find them at leadership.admin at rollroads.ca. And with that, we've come to the end of our formal presentation today, but I see my, uh, I have a little dot beside my chat box, which tells me there's been lots of fun happening there. So I'm actually gonna stop sharing my slides and head over to our chat box. So we had a question here from Shamel, perhaps for Niels or for Tam, how this program uh, studying leadership will support in practice building excellent and really talented leaders able to tackle not only simple challenges of the contemporary era, or sorry, able to tackle not simple challenges of the contemporary era as climate change, extreme social disparities, inequity, and other complex problems. So over to you, Niels. Well, thank you, uh, Selena. And <clears throat> I guess, uh, uh, Shmuel, I, I would uh, suggest that, that uh, Veronica has been able to figure out how this, these points all connect. Um, I think part of it is that you know, if, if you're interested in the technical elements of, of uh, you know, what, what needs to happen in terms of the science part of this, we actually have a whole a whole uh, set of programs around environment that that are would would be tailored to that piece of it. But if you're interested in the leadership elements of how might one have an impact in terms of setting the agenda, in terms of of looking at helping organizations move forward with addressing issues of environment or sustainability or climate change or uh, preparedness. This is a, probably a, a pretty good place to be. 
So those are all really important elements. Um, Veronica or Tam, do you have any other thoughts about that? I was gonna say, uh, taking a playbook from Neil here, Systems Thinking for Social Change, one of the books that's a text, uh, required text in one of the courses, it's one of the like framing your, those complex problems with a structure like the systems thinking structure is just one of those things that can be applied to all of those complex problems around climate change and disaster risk reduction and you know pandemics and like all of those things that intersect and um, so that's been a really valuable thing for me to really jump into um, is that systems thinking piece. Thank you Veronica. Um, Tam? I don't have too much to add to that, but I fully concur with what Veronica was saying there. That was one of the most profound learnings I had, was understanding the interconnectedness of all the variety of different systems. It's no longer just you, your team, your organization, but how it connects into everything and how touching part of the system can have unintended consequences on other aspects of the system. So that whole idea of understanding not only systems within your own organization and your own country, but worldwide systems as to how do we connect to the broader base. So it was, um, it was changing how you think about how you lead that was impactful. Yeah, thank you so much for that. Uh, I think that's actually really hugely uh, important um, because part of it is really understanding the, the leverage points in the systems and figuring out where can one be most effective and in terms of getting the elements of the system to understand some of the broader issues that perhaps they're not seeing. And that, that's something that uh, we really try and help people through in the very first uh, residency term to really start that systems thinking piece already. So, okay. Um, there's a question from Mandy there. Um, I went into the, I think it's called the multi-sectoral stream. Now it, the way you, it's presented here. So that I went into the more general one, not a specialized one, but because when I decided to do my thesis on a more specialized topic in disaster risk reduction, uh, Royal Roads helped me find a supervisor that could support that um, my what, what what my interests were, and I saw that with our my other thesis cohort here, um, they they there was a whole range of professionals that we could select from to support our theses. Thank you for that. I received a question via private message um, for you, Veronica, though, Niels, Tam, um, feel free to elaborate. Uh, question around who was in your cohort? Oh. Can you tell us a little bit about, yeah, the folks you're learning with? Totally, and everybody's doing such different things. It's That's been so great to learn from each other. Um, so when our first residency, there was, you know, um, a, CFL player, there's um, somebody that works directly with Bonnie Henry, there who's our health specialist, there's um, a lot of um, post-secondary institution people that are doing different roles within those institutions and are now focusing their research projects on their schools. Um, a lot of um, some government managers, yeah, just a whole range of people um, working at, you know, the, one of the women in my thesis group, she's doing her research on women in snow sports, <laughs> at skiing and snowboarding. And yeah, so it's just um, really like the sky is the limit to who you can expect to interact with. I would, I just want to add slightly to that, which is that we also get lots of people from the health professions, health administrators, uh, we've had a few doctors, We've had uh, executives from health authorities. Uh, we've had nurse leaders uh, who come into the multi-sectoral because they feel like they get health leadership issues internally where they are all the time. So they're really interested in what are other people in the policing or, or uh, in, in education or in social services and in the other sectors. What are they doing around leadership? And so they have these really interesting uh, conversations with people. Um, we do get people from other post-secondary institutions as well. 
uh, frequently people who have gone a whole lot of uh, distance professionally uh, without uh, having a, a master's degree. And so people come, come into this program with the idea that this will help them advance in their own uh, professional career and maybe may lead them to an academic uh, uh, direction. And we certainly do have uh, students who come into the program with the idea that as a student coming into education later in life, they might be still able to get into some kind of a doctoral program and become an academic, you know, albeit it would be one that has much more uh, practical experience. Uh, and that's, that's all acceptable too, that we see a lot of that. Okay, any other questions? One more here for Veronica around uh, why slash how did you decide to complete the thesis over the leadership project? Um, I decided that because I am a pretty big nerd and I really love re reading and writing. <laughs> it's a lot of that. So um, I really, I've been really liking that. I really wanted to dig into that scholarship piece, that engaged scholarship piece. Um, so, you know, scholar practitioner, that was kind of where I wanted to live. Um, and yeah, it's funny because that word, yo, I'm a researcher, like I didn't really um, identify like that. But now it's just been so incredible to learn how to do that properly and, and uh, fascinating. So that's, that's where I was at. And the majority of people in our cohort went into the Engaged Learning Project. Um, so there's seven of us doing a thesis and um, everybody else is doing a ELP. So. Thank you for that. Other questions people might have? It looks like we have uh, answered all the questions in our chat box so far. So just in case anyone else is typing, I might quickly scroll up and highlight some of the links that Rhonda has shared. So Rhonda shared a link to our admissions and requirement page information around how her team and our international teams are excited to uh, continue the conversation and that you can set up a time via email, that uh, you can also book a time to speak with them um, in person, which nowadays is virtually over Zoom. So I'll be sure to include that link as well. A link to learn more about our RRU writing course. Oh, Tam shared that I was a flexible admission and did not have an undergraduate degree. This program inspired me to continue my education even further. And here you are, a faculty member in the program. <laughs> Amazing. Um, Rhonda has shared more links around the application requirements, uh, the MA leadership website itself. Oh, the financial aid and award team has a wonderful blog. So please feel free to check that out. Veronica shared the name of the book that she had flashed up as well as the author. And that has brought us to the end of our chat box and actually two minutes from the end of our webinar today, which is so exciting. Um, before we sign off, Niels, was there anything else you wanted to share today? Oh, thank you so much, Selena. I, I just think uh, one of the pieces that's just really helpful is that, um, uh, you know, this is, this is a really helpful uh, whole community that uh, you're considering becoming a student in. Uh, I have to say that, that uh, you know, one of the authors that we, we look at is uh, Brenny Brown. And uh, in her Dare to Lead book, which is one of the first residency term uh, books that we use, um, she, she connects courage and vulnerability. And this is a program where people can be themselves. And part of, part of this is really figuring out who, who are you and what is it that you want? And, and what do you want for yourself and what do you want for others? And then what's the most useful and effective way that you can do that? And that's uh, really what Marilee Adams calls that learner uh, mindset. And uh, the, it really, really helps. And, and uh, we, this is more than studying about leadership. This is actually 
becoming a leader and, and improving those things that you already do that are, are leaderful. So it's, uh, it's, it's quite a voyage. And uh, you can see from Veronica <laughs> that uh, she's in the middle of it. She's, she's really enjoying this. And uh, like, honestly, this is quite an ex experience. You will connect with your cohort members and they, you know, I, from, there are cohorts from my first years here in the 2005, 2006, 2007, uh, probably yours as well, Tam, that still connect. And uh, you, you join this really incredible network of, of people. So you have wonderful things to look forward to here. Oh, amazing. Thanks so much for adding that, Niels. Um, before we sign off, Veronica, is there any advice you have for anyone thinking of applying for this program? I think just go for it. Like I, I waited a long time to do this and uh, I think I'm here at the perfect time in my own life. Uh, but, you know, it's just, if you're thinking about it now, it, then the time is right because it, uh, we need as many um, skilled leaders to address these challenges of our times. So yeah, go for it. Oh, exciting, you know, Tam, what about you? you? You also are a graduate of this program and now you're back at Royal Roads. Any advice for folks? Up in, jump in and push through whatever fear you might have of coming back into a classroom, depending on where you want it or in your life. It's never going to be a perfect time to jump into a master's program, but once you get started, you won't regret it. And as Veronica alluded to earlier, you, you seem to find the time because the program engages you, you want to be a part of it, and um, it's money and time extremely well spent. And to Niels's point, I'm still in contact and close with members of my cohort. What a beautiful way to close off our session today. Well, big, big thank you, Niels, Tam, Veronica, for joining us today, for everyone who tuned in live, and for all of those who are watching the recording as well. Uh, just because our webinar has come to a close, the opportunity for conversation absolutely has not. So please feel free to connect with us at learn.war at rollrose.ca, and we can answer any more lingering questions. So with that, we wish you a wonderful rest of your morning, afternoon, or evening, depending where in the world you are joining us from. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, Selena. Thank you, Rhonda. Thank you, Tam. Thank you so much, Veronica, for coming.